Eric Holder takes aim at state standard ground laws, and the NRA fires back. But first, to my open. It happens in a split second. One moment you're dealing with ordinary day-to-day -day stuff, and suddenly, out of nowhere, like a thunderbolt, it hits you. There's no predictable timing, no warning. Your life and the lives of those who love you are forever changed. I know. I have spent my career on the battlefield where the fight between good and evil unfolds. I've seen the ugliest side of life, the pain people go through for no reason, telling families how death unexpectedly, unnecessarily, and unjustifiably visited a loved one. I've been in the trenches prosecuting crime, crusading to give victims a voice, sentencing criminals, fighting to put dirt bags in the cages where they belong. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. This week, Rolling Stone magazine threw salt on the wounds of 267 victims and countless Americans, many already suffering from PTSD, by putting the photo of Boston bomber Jokar Sarnayev looking like a rock star any kid would want to emulate on the cover of their magazine. Their justification? We were trying to sort of draw this contrast between the person everyone thought they knew and the person he became. Really? Now you guys understand language better than most. If you're really trying to contrast the all-American student to the Boston bomber, why not show the student and then the bomber, like this, instead of just an innocent-looking teen? And what's that? You don't have room on the cover for both? Now, I'm not a graphic designer, but we did this one in no time. And by way of excuse, Rolling Stone then says, well, this is the picture everyone knows. Seriously? The one I know is of him in a baseball cap right before the bombing. And the good old New York Times coming to Rolling Stone's aid, claiming the writer was just describing how a normal American kid could go so wrong. Really? I read the article twice. I came away with no explanation as to why he went wrong, why he became a terrorist. Maybe he's a terrorist because he wants to be a terrorist, because he chose to be a terrorist. Or maybe he was just raised by a good old jihadi mom to be a terrorist. My oldest one is killed, so I don't care. I don't care if my youngest one is going to be killed today. So I want the world to hear this. And I don't care if I, I am going to get killed too. Okay? And I will say Allahu Akbar. Or maybe he's just plain evil, like the devil. Do I even care? why he's a terrorist. If I know why, will you be able to stop others like him? Hell, the FBI, Homeland Security, and ICE had the family on their radar because the Russians, who won't even return our spy, no great pals of ours, went out of their way to warn us about these freeloaders, and they still bombed us. Not to mention these crack federal agencies didn't catch those radical internet videos out there for anyone to see. Or the explosives in their home, enough to blow up the whole block. Why? I don't much care why. In fact, I really don't give a damn. Now take a look at this cover. It reads how a popular promising student was failed by his family, fell into radical Islam. Let's parse it out. Popular? You want to know why he was popular? He was a drug-dealing, pot-smoking flunky, failing virtual all his classes at UMass Dartmouth, where he was given a scholarship, and then proceeds to sell the best weed around. His harebrained friends felt badly because he couldn't afford Tufts. His Cambridge friends say they couldn't imagine the pressure he was under because he took out a student loan. Really? You're a bunch of spoiled brats. Get a job like the rest of us did in college or go to a community college. I'm sure they'd like your special brand of weed, too. Another of his Cambridge buddies says he was brainwashed. 
Okay. So now these genius kids, many of whom are behind the free Joe Car movement, have concluded that their classmate was so dumb, so impressionable, and not of sufficient intellect to decipher right from wrong. You think maybe their brains are fried because they're all smoking too much pot? And failed by his family. Wait a minute, his parents divorced after he became an adult. How come kids from 50% of American families that are divorced aren't cooking up a few bombs in their kitchen? You want to know about kids failed by their families? I can tell you about kids failed by their families. The ones who go to sleep in their own beds to become victims of unspeakable torture and abuse. The ones senselessly beaten, brutally murdered in ways that I cannot describe on television. And he fell into radical Islam. Fell? What did he do? Fall off a cliff and land in Al-Qaeda Alley? Is there a crash somewhere or a chasm somewhere in Cambridge? A ditch in Dartmouth? Some potholes so deep you can't climb out of them? And then Rolling Stone describes the pain he was in, the pain he was hiding. Really? The only pain I give a damn about is the one his victims are still suffering. You know, our system is so consumed with the rights of criminals that even its name gives them the top billing. We call it the criminal justice system. It should be the victim justice system. The victim, the person who never chose to be a part of this in the first place. And we coddle criminals as if they were the violated, not the ones doing the violating. We've got it ass backwards. We celebritize criminals, cloak them with respectability, make them look hip and rocker cool. And our hearts bleed for the ordinary kid. Surely a good boy gone astray. He doesn't seem so bad. And we long to find sensible reasons for the most brutal of crimes as we stitch together a quilt of excuses. Student loans, divorced parents, failed by his family, falling into radical Islam. And then we engage in a national therapy session. How did we lose him? Where did we go wrong? Why do we look so hard to find excuses? This dirtbag worked hard to maim and kill innocent Americans who themselves worked hard to train their bodies to run a marathon only to come face to face with evil. And before our eyes, a terrorist is turned into a rock star. I have an idea. How about you put pictures of the victims before and after the bombing? Pictures of them minus arms and legs and eyesight. I'm talking about the people Rolling Stone didn't bother to give a voice. The people whose trauma was denied, who be trying to repair their broken lives and will view the future through the prism of that one singularly traumatic event. And for you out there saying, he's presumed innocent. Let me tell you the truth about the presumption of innocence. The phrase innocent until proven guilty does not mean that those of us who've examined the evidence before trial must stick our heads in the sand and draw no conclusion whatsoever. We don't drag people into court because we assume they're innocent. We indict them because we believe they're guilty and there's probable cause and extremely damning evidence that supports that. Joe Carr, I don't like your mother, and you take after her. You came here to feed off the fat of our land like the rest of your family to suck us dry. You shouldn't have been allowed here in the first place. And you hate us? You write F America on the inside of the boat that you were cornered in? I'd like to respond to that one, but my mother's watching. Joe Hart, you're not the one in pain. You're not a rock star. You're not a cover boy. You're a damn terrorist, the spawn of Satan, who should go directly to hell sooner rather than later.